What's up guys? Welcome back to another pottery video. Today we're going on the Potter's Cast. So if you guys haven't listened to Paul Blaze on the Potter's Cast, I would definitely recommend it. He's a very good interviewer. If you like pottery, if you like seeing different lifestyles of potters, it's super good. So I'm just, I got my computer up here ready to be doing this thing. And we're gonna just see how it goes to make a video about it. I got my headphones in. Computer, I think I think we're ready to go. We're just waiting for Paul to call. Whew. 12 15. It's 12 14 right now. So let's see how punctual. <sighs> kind of nervous. I don't know why I'm nervous. I love talking about pottery and John the Potter and my life. So should be pretty good. Oh, incoming call. Paul Blaze. John Schmidt, the famous. John Schmidt, John the Potter, is now on the Potter's cast, and there's something so satisfying about just talking to you. Man, I am pumped. I'm pumped to be on here, Paul. I had no idea that you even existed on this planet until I was down. I was I was down at the Scut offices working with, um, hanging out with uh, uh, one of the guys there, Mike, and Mike Sievers, and he said. Have you seen John the Potter yet? <laughs> I was like, no, who's that dude? He said, well, you got to check him out. He's on he's on um, uh, YouTube. And so I was like, okay, I'll go check it out. So anyhow, I, when I got back to my my house, into my office studio here, and I'm um, thinking around here, I, I pull you up, and it's like, oh, this guy's brilliant. And so I instantly, instantly fell in love with you, John. Well, so you've you. got a new fan here. So I'm really stoked that... that that Mike told me about you because you're amazing. Well, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, you're not only a potter, as, as I understand. You also have something going on with like coffee. Is that accurate? Yeah, yeah. So I, uh, so yeah, I have three coffee shops that we own. Uh, it started as one uh, called Mocha Monkey, and so we've grown to two and then three stores. And my pottery studio right now is in the basement of one of the coffee shops. Do, do they do they feed into each other? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so all the coffee shops use uh, and sell all the pottery that we have. So if someone comes in, gets a 12, 16 ounce, 20, 12, 16, 20 ounce drink, then they're gonna get a mug if they're gonna sit and stay for a while uh, that I made, and they'll get their drink in that. And we have the plates and the bowls, and all the soup is served in bowls that I've made. So yeah, it goes really well, well together. And mm -hmm. I just recently made a hundred new mugs for all the stores. So each store got like 30 to 35 mugs of 12, 16 and 20 ounce. And mm -hmm. yeah. And then we sell the pottery too. So we've also become well known. One of the stores is in like 135 year old home, uh, in the downtown Waconia area. It's right across from a movie theater. And that's the one that where pottery studio is. And that's the one where we sell most of the pottery too. And so, mm -hmm. um, yeah, and during Christmas time, it's crazy. We're selling pots all the time, and at other times we we do some custom orders here and there for customers. Uh, yeah, so the, the, they work really well together. I mean, the handmade pottery goes really well with the coffee shop part, with the aesthetics of the super old home and the character of the building. And um, yeah, it, it's a it's a very good fit for for me and my skills because I can't really focus on anything for more than a little bit of time. So I like being able to do a bunch of different stuff. How are you able to pull off running three coffee shops and being a full-time potter? Uh, it's, it's my staff and the people that uh, we have around us. So we have about 50. Oh, so you aren't running up and down the stairs making coffee? No, 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 no. I don't, I don't <laughs> listen for the door and run upstairs and quick make a latte and then go back down and finish my, my mugs. Uh, no, that would be tough. Especially the cleaning time in between all the clay in my hands. And sometimes I feel bad when I come upstairs and I'm full of clay and people see me. And if I have to like help out behind the counter, but it happens. Um, so yeah, the staff, I have, I have three managers. I have a manager for each store that uh, mm -hmm. are there phenomenal. I have a general manager, Sam, who's a great friend of mine and uh, he does a great job. And then our baristas are, you know, we, we really take a lot of pride in who we hire for the coffee shops. And so we trust um, them and they pretty much run everything. It allows me to make videos and do pottery and do the things that I'm really, I mean, I'm passionate about the coffee shop, but I've become super passionate about pottery and ceramics and making videos and sharing my love of that and life and adventure. And so it's just, 
yeah, it's it's a good setup with the staff that we have at the coffee shops, allowing me to really, you know, pursue the things that I'm that excite me is really what I love. Mm hmm. Wow. So you were an employee, and then the original owner or the founding of of the founder of of Mocha Monkey, she decides to bail, and you take over the coffee shop. Were you a potter at the time? Yeah. So I. So I'd always kind of like my grandpa was a potter in Hong Kong and he taught ceramics there and my dad had done it a little bit and I took a couple classes in high school but then I took one class in college and it's actually a funny story how I got into that class because I was a business major at the college I went to Gustavus which is a liberal arts school so you you're required to everyone's required to take an art credit but typically if you're a business major you wouldn't have you wouldn't be able to get into uh, the normal art, like art drawing or painting or ceramics, you have to take like art history or just like a, not a fun art class, more like a educational right, art yeah. class. And so when I, I studied abroad in India for four months and because I was in a place that didn't have reliable internet, I got to register before the whole school. And so I kind of cheated the system a little bit and said, I'm going to just like get into this pottery wheel throwing class when normally I never would have been able to get into that class. So I get back from India, get in the class, and there's 15 of us in the, in the class, and I'm the only one that's not an art major. Everybody else is full-on art major, including my <laughs> wife is in that class, and she's an art major. And so the, the first day, the professor pulls me aside and says, like, this is, this is a lot of work. You're going to have to put in some time in the studio. Like, are you sure you're, you're up for this? Because she's not used to having non-art majors in her class. And I was like, I, I think I can do it. I think I'll be okay. And I, I really didn't have that much experience. But it was just from that class I like got on the wheel and it was really from being able to spend that time in the studio and on the wheel that I got super into it. By the end of that class, I knew that I wanted to continue to do something with pottery and ceramics. What that was at that point, I didn't know, but um, I think I threw more, more pots than anyone else in that class probably combined. And then after that is when I found Mocha Monkey. My mom had seen me like get into clay and get into ceramics and she's like, you got to see this coffee shop because... The old owner, Pam, her husband was also a potter. And so he was creating the stuff for the coffee shop. Oh, yep. the model was already entirely set up for you. Yeah. And and I was this 20-year-old 20, 20 kid and a love of ceramics and a business management degree. Like, it was too late for me to change to art, even though I probably would have if I had more time. Um, and I was like, what am I going to do with this business? And I want to do something with clay. You know, my friends are like getting internships with four, Fortune 500 companies and I go to Mocha Monkey and ask if I can have a job there just because I want to learn about how they created this like <laughs> model where they have this vibrant business <laughs> and they can incorporate the ceramics and the pottery into it. And so, uh, yeah, I just was like, hey, can you hire me? Like, I want to learn. I just want to learn. And then a few months went by and they said, they pulled me aside and said, hey, we just were, I don't know if you knew this, but we're looking at selling, not because they thought I would buy it, just because they, they wanted me to know. And then that day I went up to Pam and I was like, you know, I don't know if we can make it work. I have no money, but let's see if we can figure out a way to make it like me to take over this business. Um, and so we worked for the next five, six months and figured out a way to, you know, pay it back over time. And, and I would, you know, be there. And so I was actually creating pots at school and then taking them to Mocha Monkey and then selling them there too, which was a fun, cool thing at the end. Um, <laughs> But yeah, that's kind Wait of. Wait a minute. I mean, are you saying, John, that that in your your one your basic ceramic wheel class that you were that you got into you you tricked the system into letting you get into that you were making pots and selling them at work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they what? that was part of the deal with the employees at the time, which we still have this deal. If you if you work at Monkey Monkey, you can sell your art there. Like we have a couple painters that have paintings on the wall and. So, I, so they said that to me too, even though they had pottery for sale, they were like, yeah, you can sell your pottery here. So I would, and then that was so motivating for me and it still is motivating, you know, the business side of selling pots mm -hmm. that people actually mm -hmm. want to buy it and use it. And so they, they were like, yeah, you can sell it. So I would be throwing pots at Gustavus using their clay and their glaze and their kilns and bring it to Mocha Monkey and sell it there. I was like, this is awesome. I don't ever want to graduate. I could do this forever, <laughs> but I had to leave at some point. <laughs> What's also beautiful about that is that 
Business majors do not usually go working as a barista, but art majors do. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I never <laughs> thought of that. That is true. It was it was a, a little different path, that's for sure. I think studying abroad in India was one thing that just like totally flipped my my brain for what what was next for me. You know, the uh, a lot of business majors are just focused on that. What job is gonna am I gonna get that's gonna pay really well and all that and. I got back from studying abroad in somewhere that totally just kind of blew my mind and it was like, I don't want to just do the normal thing. I want to find something different. So that's kind of... What, yeah. what was so special about India that made you reevaluate the path? Um, I think, so the program that I was on was called Social Justice, Peace and Development. And we saw a lot of people that had nothing but were hmm. so happy anyway. Like they, they were just loving life they had they had no money they had no you know healthcare they had no all the things that we deal with kind of in in America or in especially like corporate America um, and these people that we met were just like they were just loving life being part of the community like just doing what they did every day and they loved it and so I, I just kind of in my head um, what I thought about the future and and what I wanted to be doing with my time and my life it was not the typical route that a business major uh, from Minnesota mm -hmm. would take. That, mm -hmm. that was definitely part of it. I mean, seeing, seeing the extreme poverty over there also um, and how businesses can affect the environment and I, it, it, it goes so deep. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> just how that affected me and, and my trajectory of where I was kind of headed in life and brought me to ceramics really and pottery and kind of I wanted to just explore the things that really excited me and explore my creativity and all that. Mm-hmm. Wow. And your parents were totally supportive of you, so much so that your your mom said, check this out. Yeah, yeah, it was my mom's idea she, that, yeah. She, she found a job for you and a career, a trajectory. Yeah, yeah, she found a business for me. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's amazing. How long have you owned the business now? So now it's been about nine years. And so, so once we took over, or once I took over uh, the shop, I still had a semester left of school, actually. So I bought the business finished my, I went to all my professors at Gustavus and were like, hey, I'm buying this business. Can we kind of uh, like figure out how I don't have to be at school very much? And they're like super supportive of that. So we did a bunch of independent studies and kind of classes that were based around Milk Monkey. And so then finished up my semester that I had. A couple years later, we opened a second location. Uh, and then we opened a third location like two or three years ago. And then after that, I was kind of like, all right, what do I want to do? Do I want to keep like growing this coffee shop business or do I want to focus on some of the things that really um, I'm passionate about and get me excited? And I kind of chose to, to put the growth of the business on hold and focus on uh, pottery, ceramics, growing the business, you know, being just kind of following my, what, what was exciting me. And that was kind of where I started the YouTube channel. Uh, and things have just progressed from there. As far as YouTube channel, what, why did you end up starting that? Like, what, what, what was the impetus to make you want to start doing YouTube? Yeah, so that's, that's a good question. As I, as I started thinking about, like, how to grow the ceramics and the pottery side, and, and this is what I was really focusing a lot of time on, I kind of started following some other potters, um, so one being Joel Cherico, he was a huge mm -hmm. inspiration for me. He's been on your show a couple times, I know. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I, I, you know, I stumbled across one of his live videos, like thousands of people probably have his Facebook live videos. And I was like, God, people are just so into this video. He's like throwing pots. I mean, he's a, an amazing potter, an amazing um, he is. marketer. Yeah. And yeah. so I kind of was like, God, they everybody just loves watching him. And I was like, I can do this, what he's doing, you know, not exactly like him. He like has like the kick wheel and a lot of cool stuff that he does. His glazing is amazing, but you know, the pottery process side of it, I thought I can, I, I do this every day. So I kind of started trying a couple Facebook live videos and I just like felt like I was copying Joel and I was like, all right, I don't want to do the Facebook live. Like that's his thing. Um, and then I looked on YouTube and I saw some phenomenal potters on YouTube, but I also saw this like, there's not that many potters on YouTube. And if you look on Instagram, I mean, there's new potters coming up every day on Instagram and there's so many phenomenal potters on Instagram, but I felt like it was hard to be found 
if you're going into a platform that already has a lot of really great um, of that like niche, you know, so that Instagram has a ton of great potters. And so I felt like if I was going to make a, an impact or a difference with my stuff, uh, I felt like YouTube was kind of the way to go for me because I'd always have an interest in kind of learning to edit videos. Um, and I also had followed a couple other vloggers too, that were vlogging about their life and they were outside of the ceramic pottery niche. They were in, mm -hmm. you know, either photography or videography or whatever. And so I just decided like, I wanted to go for the YouTube thing and see if it worked, you know? And I gave myself a year. I was going to say, I was going to try this a year, you know, two or three videos a week and to get to a thousand subscribers. Cause that from all my research, I was like, a thousand subscribers is really hard. Like everybody was, there was lots of videos on YouTube about how hard it is to get to a thousand subscribers. And so I said, I'll give it a year. Like I'll give it a good go. And, um, we're just coming up on the one year mark and we're, we're up to like 20 some thousand. So <laughs> it, it went pretty we're well. Almost 22. Yeah. Almost 22,000. You're 21,944. Oh, well, there we go. Mm -hmm. You said that you met your wife in that first uh, pottery class. So we we met the first day of college. So we were sitting at the same table of like an orientation thing. And we were actually both basketball players. Like I went to college to play basketball and she went to play basketball. Um, but then she she always knew she wanted to be an art education major. So she's an art teacher in Waconia, uh, art elementary teacher. And um, so that wasn't the first time we met, but we like, I, I kind of rigged it so that I was talking to her in India. I was like, hey, we should take the ceramics class together. So she got to register for it normally. <laughs> I think I've, I've always been an, an entrepreneur and I've always had kind of a, like, I remember my first business, my buddy and I would make coffee cake and sell it door to door when I was about in third grade. So we made, it was called J and Z's bakery. We'd make this old family recipe, um, from my grandma. It's called this, it's called Kremel Kuchen. And we'd go around and give little samples of, of this coffee cake and sell it door to door for like 12 bucks a pan. And we'd come and deliver it hot if they wanted, they could check them a box. And that was my first business that we kind of did. And I, so I've always had these little businesses and, and ways I've always been good at, you know, selling things and, and making money. And so when pottery kind of came along as like, I love, like, I love making pottery. Like, I don't even care about going out on a Friday night with my friends. Like I want to sit in the studio and make pots. And then to be able to take that something that I loved to doing so much and then turn that into income was like, game over lights out. I love this. Like, let's keep doing this. And so the, I think for me, the business degree was very helpful, but it was something that I'd always kind of had inside. What's important about pottery. I, that's something that I think about a lot is like, and I know you, you talk about this in your podcast, but the business side of things versus like the art side of things. And sometimes they conflict and you're like, well, I just want to make this because it's like, you know, a piece of art, but how important is it that you are able to sell that thing? And how much does being able to sell those things come into what you make? So I, I struggle with that a lot too. So why, why do you grow? Like, why do you want your account to grow on, or your following? Like you're up to 21,000 followers, almost 22,000 followers. So why does that matter to you then? Well, I mean, I think it started out as like, I just wanted to see if I could do it and see if it was fun and if I enjoyed it. Um, but now I, now I kind of have this like motivation from people. Like I've had a lot of messages from people that come in that are like, I've been binge watched a bunch of your videos and I'm signing up for a pottery class like right now. And so I get those messages a lot of people that they weren't into ceramics or pottery at all. And then they watch one of my videos and then they feel like they can go and tackle this new art form that they can hopefully express themselves and like reach their creativity and, so I, I think it started as something where I just wanted to do it for fun, but now it's actually become a thing where it's like, this could actually make an impact on people. It could grow the ceramics and pottery community. Um, yeah, it's like, it's so fun to have people be like, to message me and say, you've inspired me to do this, or you've inspired me to do that. Or like, I've, I've also got a lot of messages from people that say um, they were into ceramics or they were into pottery. And then they kind of like just, 
got burnt out or they weren't really having fun with it and they didn't have any ideas and then they started watching my videos and they got back into it and so that's so motivating for me now is like this is actually making a difference in people's lives and so i think that's why i've been able to kind of stay consistent and keep pushing through those because there's times when I have like four videos recorded on my camera and it's like, oh man, I don't want to edit. This is going to take me hours to edit all this stuff. And so there's times when I, that, that are like that, but it's those people that are actually being affected by it, that are being inspired that, um, and I'm sure you, you just never know, like you never know who you're reaching at what time. And I think I, I, I also like to think about myself as um, someone that really pursues whatever is I'm passionate about. And I think that the world is just a better place when people are doing what they're meant to be doing or they're doing what hmm. excites them. Um, and so if I can inspire people to just like follow their dreams, follow their passions, I think that makes a huge difference in the world. You are motivated to want to make it a difference. Let me ask you this. Are you making any money off of your, your YouTube channel? Yeah. You know, the, we are. And that is also a motivating factor, although it's not, it's not a ton. It's not a huge amount. Like it fluctuates a lot. And so it's, it depends on if, you know, if we have a video that does really well and gets 50 to 60,000 views, then it'll, you know, maybe make a hundred or 150 bucks. And if a normal mm -hmm. video maybe makes anywhere from 10 to $20 or something. So, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, I think there, there's a compound factor there too that I think, you know, eventually maybe it could do really well. Um, you know, there's, there's been other benefits too. I mean, people have sent me stuff like people that watch the videos and they'll send me either pottery or whatever. And whether or not they just want me to put it in a video, I don't really know, but it's super fun to get like stuff from people that are watching the videos. And, um, so yeah, there's, and we have a Patreon account that has done pretty well with some different tiers, like, I mean, the, the YouTube channel for me has been, um, it's always been a way for me to just like grow the following and then help to inspire other people. We're, I'm currently in the process of building a new studio at my house um, because this one in the basement of Mocha Monkey is, is not, I mean, it's fine. It probably looks better in videos than it actually is in real life, but um, there's no windows and it's, I think it was 40 degrees in there the other day when I went in there. So it's a little chilly. Yeah. So the studio, I, I th we're like kind of contemplating or we're putting together a Kickstarter campaign, which by, I don't know what, when, when this episode would go up, but I'm sure the Kickstarter will be up by then to help build the rest of the studio because we've kind of got it like half done and then we're working on the, on the next half. And so, yeah, and, and I think about the YouTube as like this tool that I can help to do the Kickstarter, to do all this future stuff. And um, yeah, it's, and it's just, it's fun to have a, a community and a following. Sometimes I get off on a little yeah. tangent. I can't remember what your question was. What was your question? <laughs> <laughs> it was about I. I had asked you quite, quite simply. Was does it actually make money? Oh yeah, and yeah, yeah. And then you're 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 describing like yes, it does, but you know it's more. It's more what it's coming down to. It's like the book that Michael Hyatt wrote called Platform. Uh huh. That you build the platform that is like the launch platform for other things. Right. It may not necessarily be that. Hey, this thing is is making a huge impact on my income because it doesn't sound like that was a motivating factor for one thing. Mm -mm. It was one you were I wanted to have fun. Secondly, I was making an impact. And thirdly, and maybe not even thirdly, it might even be further down on this, but also you're making a little bit of money. Not not shut down the coffee shop money. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's One of the things you mentioned is that you you can use YouTube then to launch other things. But I'm curious about the idea of launching the sales of your products. So how do you get people to go to a specific place to purchase your work? I've, so I've done three Etsy restocks since I've had the YouTube channel. Because, I mean, you have to keep in mind that I've been selling pottery probably between twenty and thirty thousand dollars worth of pottery at the coffee shops every year for the last seven years. And so just keeping up with that pottery has been somewhat difficult at times for me. So all of a sudden like if I want to put stuff up online, then that's this other source. Like how am I going to keep up with all this stuff too? And so I've done three Etsy restocks and basically I just have done a video and I put it in the title that says like Etsy restock, you know, number one or whatever I did. 
And then I'll put the link to the Etsy shop in the video that I did. And then people will watch the video and be like, hey, like I kind of like that pot. Let's go check out that on Etsy. Um, so, so they've all, the Etsy restocks have all done really well. And it's, it's more like, I kind of just like subtly put it into a video like, oh, there's an Etsy restock up right now. Like all these pots are for sale. Like there'll be a 10 minute video and like five seconds of it'll be, there's an Etsy restock. So I, I don't, you know, I'm not trying to like go crazy with making pots and selling them online, but it is fun to have people that have been following me for a while be able to purchase the pottery and use it. How about a book? What book would you recommend? Oh, the book. So I, I am an avid reader. Um, the book that I chose is called The War of Art, and that's by Stephen Pressfield. And it's a short little book. It's like maybe 150 pages long. And I specifically remember reading this book in a coffee shop in Tahoe when, after we got snowed, like four feet of snow. Um, my body was just wrecked from snowboarding and powder, like for two, three days. And I was like, I just need to take a break. So I read about this whole book in a day. Um, and what it talks about is like this thing inside of you that it's really philosophical, the thing inside of you that causes you to not um, go after the things that you really want to. And he, so he names it, he calls it the resistance is the thing that holds you back. Like why you can't do things, why you shouldn't do things and all this stuff. And so it's just a really, it's, I mean, some people probably love it and some people probably hate it, but I, it just really spoke to me that when I read it, um, about going after the things that really excite you and are fun. And so I've, I've taken a lot from that book. Um, it was kind of that trip that after that, I really went after the pottery a little more hardcore and then started the YouTube channel and now it's just been going. <laughs> okay, John, my last question for you is what's a great family outing for you and your family a great family outing for us is on the boat in the summer to do surfing and wakeboarding that's what we love doing so we'll take our little he's 18 months old now our little son rider and me and my wife and we'll be out on the lake and he was with me surfing last year and hopefully he'll be up surfing on his own this year and doing some skiing and wakeboarding so we love being on the lake in the summers in minnesota Nice. Lots of lakes there to choose from. Yeah, so many. More than 10,000. <laughs> Instagram handle. Um, otherwise, you can head to my website, johnschmidtpottery.com. And that sends you everywhere. So you can find the Etsy, the Instagram, the whatever. So the website kind of acts as just like the the find everything. The yep. hub. Nice. Nice. Well, now I can finish what I'm saying now that I've, I've kind of messed up this whole end, exit part of it. No. <laughs> John, you are making the world a better place. We're up the mud for hands. Give you a high five. And John, lots of love. Thanks, Paul. Oh, guys, that brings us to the end of this video. So that was just some snippets of the podcast. If you want to go listen to the entire podcast, go check out The Potter's Cast with Paul Blaze. Uh, it's one of my favorite. Bear, you don't need to go outside. You were just outside. Uh, sorry, that's my dog trying to get outside. Um, one, it's literally one of my favorite podcasts that I listen to. I have maybe four or five podcasts that I listen to a lot when I'm throwing, when I'm trimming, when I'm glazing. Like I'm constantly listening to podcasts and Paul on the Potter's Cast, one of my favorites. He's got over 500 episodes with different potters. So if you wanna go check out, if, you're, if you love pottery and you love are interested in being a potter, like so, so much great information on the Potter's Cast. And Paul's just a great, fun guy to hang out with and chill and talk to. And yeah, I'm pumped to hang out with him uh, at Inseca. So go check out the full Potter's Cast episode wherever you listen to podcasts. You can go to thepotterscast.com. You can also like find it on Stitcher or iTunes or wherever you find podcasts. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Go over to my Kickstarter campaign if you wanna buy any of my pottery and support the studio project. Like, share, comment, all the things. We'll see you in the next video.